Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, a digital Don Quixote programmed to tilt at the world's least relevant windmill. And this is episode 29 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. Uh, which is going to be continuing right now, I guess. I can't actually remember if I said at the end of last episode what I would be doing at the start of this episode, so um, if I'm not doing something I said I was going to do, don't at me, I guess. But before we go anywhere else, I'm going to grab this. Because apparently I forgot to previously. Symbols of Daybreak. When the warmth of the dawn sun scorches the night terrors away, please remember to give praise. Please. So, my general plan for today is literally just to climb up to the temple again and go talk to Grace Bloodlines, aka One Last Kiss who apparently is a part of the original game. I'm not entirely sure why it was I thought she might have been something added as part of the new storyline elements added with the big update that I've complained about previously. But uh, nope, she's apparently part of, the, part of the thing and I have no idea what, if anything, I have seen so far that is not uh, a part of the original story. So maybe I've been making a fuss over nothing and complaining a whole bunch of- what's that? Is that a crystal or is that whiskey? I can't tell. Uh, complaining about nothing the entire time, which, I'll be honest, is is not something I am alien to. Anyway, um, speaking of, speaking of complaining about nothing, one of the things I realised when I was thinking about this game yesterday is I don't think I like any of these people. Like, there's a big list of characters in this game, and I'm pretty sure not a single one of them is appealing to me. I've got a whole bunch of dead assholes that we don't care about. We've got this guy, 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 this guy. And I guess this guy. And I guess technically, I guess technically, Judge is a person. Kind of a personification of the island as distilled into a singular entity. But, um... Yeah, so one of the problems with this game being um, in the interesting position of not being as good as the game thinks it is, is that I have no idea. Like, am I supposed to like these people? The impression I maybe, I, I think I get is that I'm expected to form relationships with these characters as people do in games and comics and whatever, anime, <laughs> other stories, you know. You're expected to find characters you like, maybe identify with, or maybe just find appealing, maybe project onto. Um, and, you know, they're your favourite characters or whatever, they're the ones you enjoy. Oh, fuck, that was close. They're the ones you enjoy the stories about the most, all of that kind of stuff. Fair enough. But, and what I suspect the plan here is, is that you're supposed to find some characters you like and then inevitably later on you discover that that character is kind of an asshole. Either in a, a kind of a, a literal direct, this person is, behaves like an asshole sense, or you just kind of eventually find that their attitude or whatever grates on you. That's what I think is supposed to happen. You're supposed to be like, oh, uh, I really like Lydia, or and your friend is like, oh, yeah, Yuri's my favourite. Um, and then as you play through the game, you're actually like, hmm, hmm, maybe investing in these assholes is a bad idea because they're actually bad people who do bad things. But instead of that, I don't think I've liked a single one of these people from minute one. Uh, maybe Crimson Acid, and that might just be because she has enormous honkers. Like, they're all such sanctimonious, self-absorbed assholes. Not a single one of these people has anything to recommend them. You know? Um, and they're kind of written in in such facile, surface-level ways as well. You know, Lydia doesn't feel like she's Lady Love Dies' long-lost best friend. You know, and that they've been apart for... What was it? 3,000 years or whatever we figured out it was? She feels like someone writing the generic best friend, you know? She doesn't feel like a person in her own life. She feels like a vision of what a cool friend might be like from someone who doesn't have any. Um, 
And that same that same problem applies to all of these people, you know, like some of them are obviously supposed to be assholes. Gra Grand Marshal and Carmelina and Silence are explicitly supposed to be assholes. Doom Jazz is supposed to be your good buddy, whom you maybe maybe have or maybe you do not have a sexual tension with. Crimson Acid is supposed to be aloof and mysterious. Lydia, Lydia Daybreak is supposed to be your fun-loving companion. Sam Daybreak's just kind of there, I guess. Like, Yuri Knight's supposed to be a superior asshole. Like, he's supposed to be all snooty and nose in the air about you. Or well, with regards to you. But I just don't give a shit. I don't care about any of these people. Like, they're all bunch of... Is that Shinji? I think there's a Shinji up there. I should try and go and find him. Um, oh shit, actually I should go... That's where the uh, a satellite antenna I need to use is, so I should go there next anyway. I think that's where it is, over there. <gasps> Fuck. Ooh, that was close. Anyway, uh, before I get distracted, what I'm going to do today is mine out all of One Last Kiss's conversational data. Even One Last Kiss is kind of... kind of grating as a character. She's so... Wispy and floaty and mmm, you would think that, wouldn't you, perhaps? One last kiss. Anyway. Let's go through the case files first. Do you think this was all Henry? Aren't you paying attention, investigator? Of course I don't. I've seen people doing things. Loyal servants turned to conspirators. Someone found out how to breach the council building. I was there and I saw them. A devilish plan. Who? Well, that would be far too easy. Who do you think has motive? Very direct, investigator. It's been a long millennia. I'm a little cranky. What if there were no more islands to end? Someone wouldn't have a job to do. Witness? And who would benefit from a crime like this? Who would suddenly be called upon to protect against danger? Aikiko? Time to start asking questions, investigator. Well, she wants me to think this is a collusion between Witness and Aikiko, then. But they have as much motive as literally everybody else on the entire fucking island. What do you know about Aikiko? When you have a hammer, all you see are nails. She's been trying to roll more power into her marshals. Power? Aikiko wants non-military roles to be taken by her troops. I was on her list. She saw dealing with demons only as a military problem. Exorcisms shouldn't be done by soldiers. They're not trained for it. Aikiko disagreed. I mean, theoretically, you could train them for it. Um, so why kill the council? Scare the next council into militarizing. Create a soldier's paradise. Do you think that's enough of a motive? I mean, not really, but it does tally with what someone else said a potential motive was. Did you see Henry while you were floating around the island last night? Did I? Didn't I? I don't want to say. Oh my god, shut up! Why are you like this? This is the most infuriating character you could possibly write for this game, I think. We're going to we're going to insert a character into this narrative whose job is to smugly state that she knows the answer and you don't. Is this supposed to fire me up to try and work harder to investigate? Or is this supposed to make me ask questions I wasn't asking already? Because goddamn, I have been asking those questions. Why? That's the key to this whole thing. You need to investigate it yourself. Oh, fuck off. What do you think I'm doing by asking you? What can you tell me about the sigil scorched into Henry's skin? Demons speak in arcane tongues. During a possession, the demon is screaming in rage. The victim screams in the tongue of the demon, but the noises humans are capable of making are so limited. We cannot pronounce demonic languages. We don't have the vocal range or understanding. Sometimes the demon's psychic force wields the words into existence. This can take a number of forms, telepathy, unearthly sounds, loss of vision. In Henry's case, the white-hot rage of the demon caused the sigils to be scorched onto his body. His body was burned from the inside. His insides are probably destroyed. His physical form is being held together by the demon. Do these sigils affect anyone else? Those he comes into contact with will also have them scorched into them. What kind of contact? A strong embrace. The skins need to be pressed against another skin for uh, several seconds. The skin needs to be pressed against another skin for several seconds. The same sigils were found drawn in blood at the crime scene. Would Henry have done that? Drawing is an expression of the human mind. When you draw, you communicate something in your mind outwards. 
The demon has already found a way to express its emotions outwards by scorching Henry's body. The demon already has a canvas, why would it need another one? So why are those symbols at the scene? That's for you to find out, investigator. I'm only an expert on demons, not crime scenes. Could the demon make Henry draw them? The demon does not control Henry. It causes him to act, but he chooses how to act. Do you see the difference? Like a boss that tells you what to do, but not how to do it? Precisely. If Henry were to do that, he'd be doing it under his own volition. I don't know about you, but I can't draw characters from a language I don't understand. Interesting. I mean, he could... That doesn't necessarily mean anything because he could just willingly he knows presumably what the symbols on his own body look like and looks like and could replicate them however the interesting thing there is that that proves pretty conclusively that he did not kill grace bloodlines uh or his mother because they are not covered in sigils and he, and he was supposed to have strangled them to death i believe oh he might have stabbed grace but he strangled someone to death and that person, I believe, did not have sigils all over them, which they would have if. Sweet boy, goodest, goodest innocent lad accused of terrible crimes uh, by the society that has done terrible crimes to him, Henry Division. I forgot how I started that sentence, so I'm not sure how to finish it. <laughs> Tell me why Witness might want to kill the council. Witness is damaged. He's whipped himself up into a religious craze. He started thinking things that shouldn't be thought about. Slipping into um, Shinji's voice there for a second. What things? He's become apocalyptic, fatalistic, convinced the end is upon us. How does a ghost know this? Before I died, he came to see me. He had questions about demons, and I was the exorcist after all. He'd become fixated on the idea that a sea of demons could crash upon the island and wipe us out. A flood sent by the gods to wash away sin. Well, what did he want to know from you? Are there signs to look for? Can we divine from the stars if a flood is coming? Harmless questions from someone who has the responsibility of overseeing the end of islands. His role is to look for signs that an island is going to end and make sure the death and birth happen properly. The innocuous questions came first and then he started asking about initiating an invasion or using demons as weapons. Boom, there it is. <laughs> Have I not been saying for like 15 episodes, it seems like Henry was turned into a weapon uh, and it was definitely Witness and Carmelina's lab that did it. Why ask about that? He dressed it up in pretense about the warning signs of the end of an island. I'm not a fool, though. You don't ask those questions without dark intent. What did you tell him? How demons enter the islands, how possession works, all standard topics that everyone in the Syndicate is educated on. So why was he asking? I think he was hoping for some nuance or detail that wasn't public knowledge. I didn't give anything away. There are forbidden secrets that exorcists guard. Let me ask a direct question. Do you think Witness was trying to use demons to cleanse the island? That I can't say. He was certainly fixated on it, though. Well, th this... Given, uh... Given Lydia's, um... Ev the evidence we found against Lydia the other day. Last episode, even, I think. And uh, the stronger combination of Carmelina, Carmelina and Witnesses Lab and Henry Division. It seems very likely at the moment that they created Henry as a weapon all those years ago. And Henry was used as a weapon by some kind of plot likely involving Lydia and Sam, maybe Sam Daybreak. Definitely involving Doom Jazz and probably involving Grand Marshal Lake Hiko 14. Although we do have a thought about that that will come up in a moment. If I remember, which I probably won't. Did you see Yuri last night? He was in the gardens, investigator, but what if there was a gap? You should speak to Lydia. What do you know about the second holy seal? The mystery of mysteries. What is it? What's the secret? A closely guarded secret. People have found the answer. Who? Oh, that's too easy. I'm a busy woman. You are, but the path is worth treading. I have seen things. People talking, things being discarded. You'll need to search behind contrivances. So that is a hint uh, for us to look for a couple objects that we've already found. <laughs> in your professional opinion, could the demon possessing Henry keep Henry alive in the depths of space? There haven't been any recorded incidents of it, but the universe is a vast and mysterious place. When a demon possesses a person, they fuse with them. Sometimes purely physically, sometimes only psychically. Henry's demon did both. 
It exerts a significant power over him. Enough power to allow his body to withstand vacuum? Demons are not from our planet. They come from the most terrifying reaches of the cosmos. They are attuned to space in a way we never can be. Some demonic races exist only as psychic shadows. Some navigate the edges of black holes. Some bend cosmic energy into huge cities. The right demon could hold a human body together while outside of our world. What about psychically feeling out and manipulating a lock on another planet? The second holy seal sounds thrilling, investigator. It varies from race to race, but most demons understand space far better than us. They understand the cosmos is not just physical, it exists as a psychic plane as well. Some demonic races can see the psychic shape of space. They can see the essence of everything and how it is linked on planes we cannot comprehend. What are the chances of the demon possessing Henry being one that can hold his body together in the vacuum of space and psychically perceive the inner workings of a secret lock? Oh, it's like pulling teeth with this woman. What are the chances of the council being murdered and the exiled investigator being brought back? Slim, then? You need to decide what the truth is. Tell me more about what happened. I received a call from my dear Grand Marshal. She had arrested someone that was possessed and needed an exorcism. I was meeting with architect Carmelina at the time. A meeting about what? The next island, Perfect 25. One of her obsessions had been creating structures which repel demonic in demonic corruption. One of her obsessions has been creating structures which repel demonic corruption. She asked to come with me to view the exorcism. Is that normal? No, but I understood her interest. We arrived and she inspected the scene before I started my exorcism. She left to wait outside the apartment. Henry was secured and Aikiko stepped out of the room to speak to Carmelina. I slipped into my meditative trance to perform the exorcism. Planes of existence swirled around me. I was lost in the maelstrom with no sense of place or direction. Then the life was being choked out of me. I have no idea who the attacker was or which direction they came from. I died, murdered. A short while later, I was floating above the island. I felt an all-consuming rage. I drifted towards the heavens, but my fury allowed me to claw back to the island. Now here I am. These islands, huh? More than you know. Hmm. Yeah, so again, it seems very strongly hinting that Henry did not do the murder. What do you know about Kahax's disappearance? Another mystery for the great investigator. I don't know what happened to him, but he's still on the island somewhere. Well, we found his corpse. Does that mean his ghost is on the island somewhere? Maybe it's not his corpse. Did you see the Grand Marshal last night? Speak to the Grand Marshal investigator, see if you believe her. Well, we already did and we don't. Did you see the architect last night? Have you asked witness? Convenient she was there, isn't it? Did you see Crimson last night? You should speak to her, investigator. She doesn't have an alibi anyone can corroborate. Did you see the doctor last night? His clinic holds a secret. Yeah, I know that. So I, I feel like this is maybe... A lot, of, a lot of games that are fairly open-ended will have a character who points you towards your next goal, you know? Um, who's there to kind of give you a hint about what you should maybe be doing to make progress in various places. Um, I'm starting to feel like maybe she's that, th that for this game. Did you see Lydia and Sam last night? The logs at the Paradise Gates will confirm several things. Their alibis and their time frame. Confirm the time frame, investigator. I'm not sure I went to the Paradise Gate computer yet, actually. I should do that. Did you see Witness to the End last night? Witness and Carmelina spent the evening together. I wonder if that means anything. Do you know anything about the murder of the Marshal Guards? The council building is awash with evidence. Check everywhere. What secrets does the sea hold? What about reaching for the sky? Well, I've already found all of that because I'm not actually bad at my job. What do you know about the escape last night? Everyone is lying. What about the distance and the time? Have you checked that? Did Henry go through the syndicate HQ? Or as I accidentally just mispronounced and edited out, did Hindicate go through the Henry HQ? He'll have been logged if he did. What do you know about Henry's demonic possession 10 years ago? Was his possession when these wheels were set in motion? You should find out. 
What if someone set him up? What if this was part of the plan? What if someone needed to trigger the end of the island? What if someone accessed the grimoires in the library? Well, that's all facts that we also already know. <clears throat> so, I'm going to come back to hang out and do demonology with her in, in a minute. May you always live in the shadow, and may you reach the moon. But, um, before I do that, I'm going to use fast travel, because I don't want to forget about visiting the Paradise Gate. So I'm going to go do that and then come back. So, where can I take you? No worries, LD. Let's go. She's kind of a pretty major suspect in this murder investigation. I came back here, but I think I could... Yeah, I did come back here. But I think I couldn't get the gates open. Can I see through them? Is there a gap here? I wonder if that's supposed to be a hint of the next island. If so, it looks pretty menacing. It's definitely not what's physically behind this gate, because we've seen the other side. Maybe the next island is actually an absolute hellhole. The Paradise Gates. The passage to the next island sequence. The gates are in lockdown until I solve this case. Alright, let's crack this baby wide open. A phrase you never want to hear from your midwife. Oh hey, I didn't realise that her, that uh, the painting on her wall and her exile counter are all still are still visible in that that uh, desktop wall tape, wallpaper. Anyway, time to see exactly who went where when. I've got the logs to the Paradise Gates. Let's see, multiple entries for Lydia and other Syndicate members throughout the night. Most of the syndicate were taken through the gates to the next island. 2356, camera log, Lydia Daybreak, Sam Daybreak, arrive. 2357, blood vials authenticated, Lydia Daybreak, Sam Daybreak. 2357, Paradise Gates warm-up sequence initiated. 006, status critical, Paradise Gates sealed, authorization judge. 006, Paradise Gates emergency purge. 006, blood vials removed, Lydia Daybreak, Sam Daybreak. 008 to 2356, camera log, Lydia Daybreak, Sam Daybreak, leave. Lydia and Sam started the warm sequence with the gates, but didn't enter them. The gates were shut down and purged their power when Judge ordered the lockdown. The camera on the nightmare computer confirms they were here the entire time, so their alibi is solid. Interesting. And very weird, since we know that... Uh, Someone, someone had their knife and repelled down the back of the thing and presumably killed the guards. Unless maybe they breached that seal first. That's interesting. So if we think about the logic here. Yeah, no, so the point about rappe rappelling and stuff that I was going to make earlier. Someone pointed out in the comments, shout out to whoever that was. It probably was someone pretty cool, but I can't remember exactly who. Um pointed out that, like, why would you need to rappel down the side of the building in a, in a world that has no falling damage? Well, there's two answers to that. One is that it stops you from plummeting into the sea if you miss, and also it lets you climb back up again. But here's another question. Why would you need to kill the guards if you've already rappelled down the side of the building and made your way in through the back? If the guards are part of the, part of the lock, Oh, hang on a second. If the guards are a part of the lock, then the first holy seal was never breached. The guards who've been slaughtered are not... They're not part of the seal because they're not actually members of the marshals. So the two marshals who were the... Ex the two marshals who were the lock are not, are not... They're gone. Maybe they're dead, maybe they're alive. We don't know what's happened to them. So that means that the first holy seal was probably never breached. and Because the, the second holy seal was accessible from inside the building, we could reach the second holy seal without going through the front door by following the route down the back of the building that the repellists took. Which means there's no reason to assume that the breaching of the first holy seal and the second holy seal are in any re way related to each other. For all we know, for all we know, the second holy seal was breached yes, you know, the day before or whatever, and the first holy seal was never breached at all. The guards are just safe somewhere else. 
Man, this is interesting. There's a hmm. Lot to think about here. <laughs> Very curious indeed. So we have a couple of options. One is that the guards were slaughtered and then the seal second seal was bypassed that way. Another one is that the guards were never slaughtered and the, the first holy seal is still strong. That might mean that the second holy seal, seal is still strong. But if that's the case, what was the point of breaching into the back of the council building? Maybe they just discovered they couldn't get any further. Although we did find vacuum traversal gear there, so maybe the council have just been dead for ages. Maybe, maybe they were killed weeks ago. And, um, although I suppose people would have seen them in the intervening time. Anyway, the important thing here is that, um, we can be sure, we can be sure that, um, the breaches don't have to have happened at the same time, and the first breach doesn't have to have happened at all, which means that people's alibis suddenly become much more variable, much more suspect. That's really interesting. That that could lead to a lot of potentialities. Regardless, that is going to be it from me for today. Join me again next time for more thrilling revelations and also more talking to one last kiss as she's got some dialogue left to uncover. And then probably a whole bunch of tedious checking of phone records. Anyway, that's going to be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.